This is my video for the Rios Lotto Nightfire Rifle Invitational held in December of 2023. On this stage, there are 11 steel targets at about 50 to 150 yards that have to be hit from two different positions. My third person iPhone video is way brighter than it actually was, and when you get to see my POV video, it's going to be way darker than it actually was. The actual lighting conditions were somewhere in the middle between these two. The rifle I'm using is a 12.3 inch What Would Stoner Do short barreled rifle with a Gemtech suppressor, Vortex 1 to 6 Viper PST, and a Rain 3.0 light. There were two big lessons that I took away from Midnight Brutality earlier in the year. One was that if I'm using a white light, I want something in a high candela range like the Rain 3.0 that's 100,000 candela. And that I also would want a suppressor if I'm shooting at night to deal with the muzzle smoke. Well, it doesn't completely eliminate it, it does reduce the muzzle smoke that appears directly in front of me, and it is less smoke that gets backlit by the weapon light. Here's the POV version of the stage. You can see I'm engaging the six hanging steel first, then I'm going to engage the steel silhouette at about 150 yards. The further targets do have strobes on them, which looks really cool at night and lets you know they're immediately hit. Uh, the longer range targets like those do have some light on them to begin with though, so I don't necessarily need my weapon light to see them. Uh, moving over here, I'm engaging the smaller diamonds in that corner. Uh, the targets in the corner are more difficult to shoot left-handed. I'm having to do a hard lean and cant the gun slightly to make the hits on those. On the long range target here in particular, you can see how much darker it is on the POV versus the third person video. There is a lot of light pollution on the range, but uh, it definitely wasn't uh, as bright as the third person makes it look. On this stage, I'm fourth visible light with 81.62% of the winner's score. There was a night vision division as well, but there was only five participants in that division. On this stage, there are two long range steel the shooter must engage from the first position, along with two smaller steel targets at about 75 yards. After those targets, they'll move through the shooting area, engaging the paper, and then re-engage the long-range steel from the final position. All the steel from this first position are easy to see without even turning my weapon light on. I do really enjoy those strobes going off at night. It does make it feel like playing a video game. At this match, you're allowed to turn your weapon light on and just leave it on. This is something we're not going to be doing at brutality matches. We'll designate the areas where you can have your weapon light on. But because this is how this match is set up, I'm going to just click my weapon light on and leave it on because doing otherwise would be a competitive disadvantage for myself. You can see that the trail is marked with red chem lights. Uh, that's a good safety practice that we also use at our events. Now coming into this last position, I should have turned my weapon light off because I'm going to just backlight my muzzle smoke and make it a little bit harder to hit the targets but ultimately it doesn't slow me down too much. Here's the POV of the same stage. You can really see how much darker it is from this perspective. Uh, all you can see is my muzzle flash, the strobes going off up on the hill, and sometimes the sparks on the other steel targets there. I think the POV perspective gives you a better idea of what it actually feels like to shoot these stages at night, and that your uh, sensory input is very much reduced. While being confident in one's shooting abilities with weapon lights at night is definitely important from a self-defense perspective, I will say that it is not as much fun as just shooting in the daytime to me. The reduced visual information inherently makes me more cautious while I'm shooting the stage and while I'm waiting my turn between stages to make sure that I'm in the right place and that everyone else is as well. Safety issues can compound very quickly at night. I am 10th visible light on this stage with 77.61% of the winner's score. On this stage, there are two static steel the shooter engages from the start box. After that, they move into the shooting area and engage five paper targets as they become visible. And from the final shooting area C, they will engage two steel targets up on the hill at about 300 yards. This stage got filmed in vertical video, so I'm just going to split screen it with a POV. Just imagine the lighting conditions being somewhere in the middle between these two images. I know there's targets along this path somewhere and that there's a total of five, but I didn't really walk the stage or memorize them before I started. 
At this point, I know there's one left, and it's right before I leave this area. From this final position, resting on the barrels, uh, there's going to be two steel targets up on the hill about 300 yards away. And here I encounter an interesting problem in that the strobes are about the same color and brightness as the reticle inside my scope. So when I'm missing here, it's because I'm confusing the strobe for the red dot inside my scope. Talking to other competitors, several other people encountered the same problem. No, this isn't a reason to run out and buy a green reticle scope, but it is something to keep in mind if I encounter the same shooting problem in the future. I'm 10th visible light on this stage with 76.48% of the winner's score. Final stage of the match, from the first area, there are six paper targets to be engaged. The shooter will then move to the bed of the pickup truck, and there will be two closer range steel, and then three in a V formation up on the hill. I start on the right side of the range because it's easier to move right to left as a left-handed shooter. One hostage rescue shot there, one close paper here I don't even need to aim at. Another hostage rescue shot down the side of the range here. There'll be one paper target left from inside. As I move to the truck, I conduct a reload and deploy my bipod. You'll see the close range steel here at about 50 yards. And then I'm going to go one for one engaging the further targets in that V formation on the hill. Some self-assessment here. I need to do a better job of keeping the gun up as I'm moving around looking for targets. I have it pointed slightly at the ground, which makes me waste time as I find the targets and move to engage them. All those fractions of seconds add up to be inefficient. In retrospect, I probably really didn't need to reload here, but if I'm going to reload, I want to do it on the move when it doesn't cost me time. I'm sixth visible light on this stage with 81.71% of the winner's score. In the end, I'm fourth visible light out of 34 shooters with 80.33% of the winner's score, and I am fourth overall out of 39 shooters. Low light and no light events are relatively rare events for private citizens to be able to attend, so I'd like to thank the Rio Salado Multigun Division for inviting me out to this one. If you'd like to attend a low light slash no light event, Consider attending Midnight Brutality that will be held in West Virginia in May of 2024 in conjunction with Woodland Brutality. You can find more information at brutalitymatches.org. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. And always remember, the Second Amendment is for everyone.